Welcome. In this lesson, we're going to look at doing a maths challenge. Now, this is going to be slightly different from all the other lessons because what I want you to do is kind of try and solve the problem yourself first. So most of the code in this maths challenge that I've used, you've already learned, apart from the new code, which is the um, evaluation function and the init function. Other than that, everything's been been done and that being said you don't actually need those two functions to make this program work successfully it's just a way that I do it to make it um, a little bit simpler now what I'm going to get you guys to do is just pause the video or stop the video completely and spend as much time on this as you need now I suspect that to create this this challenge successfully is probably going to take you the best part of at least 30 minutes if not an hour um, if you're new to this so this is the mission. So you're going to create a math challenge game that asks the user 10 randomly generated questions and then gives them points for each correct answer. The final thing should say, well done, you got this many points. Um, you should also make sure each of the maths questions is it works, so it gives out the correct answer. The question types should be a mixture of things like add, divide, minus and times tables. So you have a complete mixture, not, not the same one twice. You can't have a whole math challenge just made of add questions. It has to be add, minus, divide, and times tables. Um, and that's pretty much it. So pause the video now. Um, get your code together. So create a new Python file called Maths Challenge. And give it your best shot. And then when you're ready, come back and I'll show you my version. So welcome back. Um, so if you haven't completed the challenge, please do it before looking any further, because this what happens in coding, it's all about how you solve problems. Now I can solve the problems for you every day of the week, but the fact is you won't start really learning this stuff until you delve in and try and solve a problem all by yourself. Okay, so you, you haven't done the challenge, complete it, and right now I'm gonna move on, I'm gonna show you my solution. Now, my solution won't be the only one. There's going to be plenty of ways of doing this. This is just my one, and I've just tried to keep it as simple as possible and use the techniques that we've learned so far, minus the one thing I'm just about to explain to you in a second. So here we are. I've created a new Python document called Maths Challenge, number 10. So what I would say to you guys is save your version as my version, and then maybe even create a new one just for the way I've done it right now and you can follow along just so you've got two versions and then you can kind of look at your version look at mine and see which one works best for you so let's open this maths challenge so here it is in its entirety um, I've left a few of my testing options in because I'm going to delete them in just a second but I just want to show you how I test things as I go so the first thing from the last lesson is we needed to import the random module and then what I've done is I've asked the user's name once again, I don't need to do this, but it's just it makes for a better program. The next thing is I've just said, hello, welcome to the maths challenge. I've also initialized the points count at the top. Now, this is really important that it's done at the top, not further on down. And it's up to you. I mean, really and truly, this should probably be here. Because um, all your variables that aren't inputs should be at the top. So it kind of makes it easier. So that's, that's the way I look at it. Imports go at the very top. Variables go next, and when we get onto functions, functions come after that, and so on. So once we've got the niceties out of the way, we can then look at the program. So the first line is a for loop. So basically says, how many questions do you want to ask the user? So I've decided that I want to ask the user 10 questions. So I'm going to start at 1, and I'm going to end at 10. Because remember, the last, the last 11, or the last 1, which is 11, in the range won't actually work it, that's when it stops that's when it stops the for loop from carrying on and that's when it breaks out of it okay so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to ask, this this line here just says look run this run this for loop 10 times okay um, the next one is is I want my question types okay so I've said right my question types can be made out of pluses, minuses, or times. You can also have divides in there as well if you want to. So in order to get divides, very simple. Um, you just put it in like that. Now, one thing you should notice about the way I've done it is very much they are strings. So in the past, when we're trying to work out calculations, you would do this 
as if they were actual parameters. So rather than putting a string value around, you'd just say times like that, and you'd say a minus like that, and you'd say a plus like that. There's a few issues with that, and when it comes to calculating, it doesn't always work it out the, the right way. And the way that I've done it using this, this function here called the evaluation function is it basically converts strings um, into integers. So rather than the other way around, which is in our in our last one, when we did the times table one, when we made up our answer, we said something like number one times num two, and that would give us the answer. The problem the problem is this 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 question type here. Um, this question type here, which is is filtering through on this one, it's it has to be a string in order for it to work. Like I said before, if you if you do put it in as a, as a value, it kind of it just breaks it. So it has to be a string, which means the numbers have to be strings, and then the calculation has to be then converted from strings into um, integers. And that's what this eval function does. It basically converts everything to a string first, and then it it recombines it as an integer. Um, there's there are better ways, there's different ways of doing that. I'm sure of it, but this one just works when you when you're trying to make something that's randomly generated it's really good so the first thing is what kind of question type do i want so i've just i've said plus minus and times table question types so in my random loop in a second that's one i'm going to pull so then i want numbers so my first number just like your times table we had the first number and the second number and then they combined the first number can be anything from one to ten or one to nine um and then the second number is the same from 1 to 10. Remember, you can be as high as you want. So if you wanted the, the second number to be 100 or 200, you could do that, okay? So it, just, it will just grab a number from the lowest point to the highest point. So there we are. We have our number 1 set up. We have our number 2 set up. And we have our question type set up. If you want to make more complex questions, you can obviously have a question 3 or a question 4. If you want to say, add this, add this, add this, add this, that's absolutely fine. And um, what's happening down here now? In actual fact, this should probably, if I cut that, I'm going to put this up here. Because it makes more sense when you have two things together. Because what's happening here is I define the question type here, and then I convert it so that the operation can make it random. So it basically says, right, grab the question type. So in this case, operation is going to be equal to plus, And then I can push that forward. So it's not actually going to push the question type forward. It's going to push the operation forward. Um, and the operation is going to contain a randomly generated question type. Okay, so that's using the random dot choice, and then the numbers are using random dot integer, just like we showed in the last one. Now, testing purposes, you just need to make sure that your operator is being printed, that it's the correct one. You need to make sure your number one is the correct one, and your number two is the correct one, and vice versa in that case. Um, because sometimes you could type it wrong down here, for instance, you could have something like num2 add num2. It would still show you num1 operator num2, but it would be the wrong answer. So that's why you just need to make sure at a very early stage that it works. Now, I'm going to get rid of them because you don't need that for the program. I just wanted to show you how I test these things as I, as I work forward. Okay, so we have all of our parameters set up. The next thing is this math um, variable. It takes the eval, and once again, it converts num1 into a string, and then it puts the operator, which is already a string, into the text. So it says num1 operator, and then it converts num2 into a string. And by the end, it takes all three strings and converts them into an integer total. So it gives you the full total of num1 plus whatever the operation is plus num1 and it gives you that total so the maths is then equal to the total of this so if, if for instance the operator was times and number was one and number two was two so it's a one times two equals two so that that math value there would be equal to two so this next bit we have this um, backslash n which creates a space and then it says the number that the question number that we're on and then it gives us item which is this value here so it says the first time it comes around it say that would say one second time it comes around it say two all the way up to ten um, and then it prints out the question so it says 
question one or question number one the question is two times or one times two and then you have to put your answer so it says right what's your answer and then the integer which is going to turn it into an integer value as we've seen previously what is your answer so i'm going to type two if it's if answer this one here is equal to maths then give it correct and then give it some points else say it's incorrect the answer is maths now because it's a for loop and we're not looking at while loops it will instantly go to the next iteration from this point here so it won't break out from here it will just go back to the top until this value is completed until this one here until the loop has run 10 times okay so it will no matter what it will do it 10 times not like in the previous example where we just said current equals false and then it broke out of it and then finally well done your you scored points um, so that's the full code and that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 lines of code so just short of 20 lines of code um, which is quite a complex program so I hope you found that one useful but let's just run it just to make sure it still works and everything's happy um, so what's your name mr. C and then here we go so hello mr. hello mr. C um, welcome to the maths challenge so that's all up here and then it says question number one which is this one here and then it's got this item number there okay just move that out of the way so you can see the code at the same time um, the question is 8 minus 10 uh, 8 minus 10 is minus 2 and then it says correct and then you notice it's done the loop again so because it's correct it gave me a point it hasn't showed me that but hopefully it will show me that at the end and then it goes back to the top and it grabs all the new information so it runs all of these modulations again creates a new operation creates a new number one and creates a new number two and it generates all this so one minus nine is eight i'm um, incorrect it's minus eight um, and i'm just going to whiz through just so you can see this happening so that, just to make sure we get all ten so we're up to four um we number number five number six number seven number eight and you'll notice that they're all different and they're all different operators so so far it's all working well number 10 so what happens at number 10 it should break out and finish and give me my point which i believe should be two points um so incorrect well done you scored a one point ah there you go um another fun thing you could do is also to get it incorrect you could give them minus points which is always good for a laugh isn't it so I hope you found it useful so in the next lesson we are going to move on to nested if statements um, so I hope that was useful and I'll see you in the next one